How's it going guys? My name's Tristan Kuhn, and as you can see by this title, I'm gay, and uh, this is my coming out story. When I was questioning my sexuality and coming out, I watched a bunch of these YouTube videos. They were super helpful for me, and so I just wanted to put mine out there to share with you and maybe help someone else uh, in their struggle to come out. Now I just want to say real quick that this coming out story is my entire coming out story. It's me coming out to myself, coming out to friends, coming out to family. However, a large part of it is going to be me coming out to myself because that was one of the hardest things for me to do. Actually, it was definitely the hardest part of coming out to, was coming out to myself. So, to start out, I didn't really ever feel like I was different. I always felt like I was the same as my friends. I like sports, I like watching football, I like hanging out with them. I felt like I fit in with them and I didn't really feel like I stood out or I was different. And I think this is a big reason why it took me so long to come out. I went through all of high school and it wasn't until I entered college where I began to question my sexuality. And looking back on it, like, I was gay from day one. I remember when I was like 10, 12 years old, uh, kneeling in church, I went to a Catholic church growing up and Everyone would go up to get communion and I would just be watching all the different guys and looking at the guys coming up and being like, wow, like, that kid looks so cool, like, I want to be friends with him. I would always label these guys who now I realize I thought were attractive as cool. I was always drawn towards guys. I was never drawn towards girls. I was never like, oh, that's a cool girl. I want to go hang out with the girl. I remember very specifically one time before going to church, um, talking to my mom in the kitchen about uh, some gay topic. I don't know how we got onto it. It's the first time I ever remember talking to her about anything LGBT related. But I remember her saying, I believe that people can be born straight or born gay but I don't believe in bisexuality. I believe that you're either born straight or born gay. Um, you don't get to choose what sexuality you like. You don't get to go back and forth. You're either one or the other and it's black and white. And then I remember her saying, even if you are bi, wouldn't you just pick to like girls? If you could pick, it would be so much easier. Life would be easier. Why don't you just choose to like girls? And then I remember thinking like, oh yeah, that sounds logical. Like if, if you're bi, you'll just pick to like girls because that'll make things a whole lot easier for you. And I was a little kid. I didn't really understand what it was to be bi. And I remember going to church that day and for the first time I really thought about my sexuality. I thought, wow, there's like, look at all these guys. Like these are really attractive guys. Like I, I like they, they look, they're handsome guys. Like do, am I gay maybe? Like I seem to like them. And then at the same time, I remember thinking, oh wait, no, I think girls are attractive too. Like, look, there's a, there's a pretty girl right there. I just like, I, I, I think girls are pretty too. So, oh goodness, like I must be bi. And if, if, if I'm bi, then I, I I'll pick, I'll, I'll like girls. And that was my first time ever thinking in my head that I might be gay. And right then I decided maybe I'm bi, but I pick girls, I choose girls, I choose to like girls. So after I decided I like girls and I made it a choice, like I had an option, I never thought about being gay. If any somewhat gay thought ever came in my head, I just instantly crushed it, put it to the side. And that's why I didn't come out until I was in college and I didn't think about my sexuality until college. I went all through high school and the rest of middle school without even questioning my sexuality and believing that I was straight. But now fast forward to my freshman year of college and I was still completely closeted, but there were so many signs that I was gay and I didn't even recognize it myself, but one is just being that every time I was at a party, if a girl was ever flirting with me, I just remember in my mind I was evil towards them. Like I was like, oh this girl has like a mole on her face, so like ah, I'm not interested in her. Like, oh this girl, you know, she, she's not pretty enough. Or like, oh she's a bad personality. Or, oh my, you know, my friend likes her more and is more interested in her, so I'll just let my friend, you know, talk to her, flirt with her. And every single girl that ever talked to me at a party in somewhat of a flirtatious way, I just like shot down in my mind. Like I don't want to, I don't want to talk to you. And I pretty much spent all my time meeting new guys, becoming friends with guys. And by the end of my freshman year, I had a ton of amazing friends, but like, 95% of them are guys. I literally just didn't become friends with any girls. I don't really know why, but anytime a girl like somewhat kind of flirted with me in a social situation, I didn't like it and I just kind of distanced myself from them. But guys didn't do that, so I'd always hang out with them more. And frankly, I liked hanging out with guys. I liked making guy friends and I liked talk talking to guys, but I just wasn't necessarily as interested in talking to girls. It wasn't me trying to be rude, it was just what I naturally did. Despite my behavior, I couldn't imagine the possibility of me being gay. I thought all gay people were flamboyant, they were feminine, uh, they were a little bit extra, kind of out there. That was just what all the people that I knew and I knew that they were gay were like. And I just thought to be gay, you had to be feminine, flamboyant, theatrical, and that's just not who I was. And so, and I didn't want to be that. So I said to myself, I, I'm not gay, I can't be gay because I'm not that. And to be gay, you have to be this and that's not what I am so I'm not gay but that's not logical and it took a lot of personal realization and education on the LGBT community for me to fully understand that so that was one thing that happened my first semester in college but more importantly my first semester in college I came to the University of Illinois for gymnastics I was training with them that entire summer we came up the summer before uh, the fall semester when most people's freshman uh, school starts and I got to know these guys, the gymnastics team became my best friend, they're awesome people, they're still my best friends to this day. They're such an amazing group of people and I'm so thankful for them. However, after becoming really good friends with all of them, I found out that two of them were gay and I had no idea. And this was kind of a shock to me because I thought I could always tell when someone was gay. I didn't realize that gay people could blend into a crowd, it was new to me. I just only really met really flamboyant gay guys in my life. So realizing that you could be gay and you could be masculine was something that I never realized you could be before. Um, I thought that to be gay you had to be waving around a gay flag and telling the whole world that you're gay. And it was really eye-opening for me to not only just have gay friends but also to have 
friends that I could relate to, I could connect to, and I could like associate with them. And that was a huge part of my coming out process and realizing to myself that I was gay. For the first time in my life, I realized that you could be gay and masculine, or you could be gay in yourself. You didn't have to be a very flamboyant person to be gay. And that was something that was really hard for me to realize. And having friends on the gymnastics team who I could relate with, associate with, connect with, and that were also gay was a really helpful thing in my own coming out process. However, despite all this, I still could not accept the fact that I was gay. I did not want to be gay. I was like, I cannot be gay. This is not me. Other people can be gay, and that's cool, but me, no, like, I, 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 I'm straight. And I remember laying in bed so many nights and being like, all right, I'm pretty sure I'm like, 90% sure I'm straight, 10% sure I'm gay. And then like, I'd be thinking more, and then the next day might be like, 80-20, and then 70-30. And by the time I started getting to like that 70-30 point, I'd think of all these reasons why I like girls and why I'm not gay, and then I'd go back to like 90-10, and slowly like creep up, creep up again. And I kept on just like, every time I started to get close, closer to 50-50, I'd always push myself back psychologically. And it was kind of a weird thing I did, but um, yeah, it was just, I don't know, it was something I did. So that was really as far as I got my first semester of freshman year. My mind got a little bit more open to it, but I was still very closed off, did not want to be gay. I was also super busy my first semester of freshman year. It might have been my busiest semester of college. I was uh, pledging a business fraternity, uh, getting all my class stuff together. Um, so I just didn't really have a lot of time to think about my sexuality, and it was really easy for me to just put it off. However, second semester came along, and I had a lot more time on my hands, and like struggling with my sexuality was definitely like a more important issue, and it kind of like ate at me more on the inside. So I set out a goal, and I told myself, I said, by the end of the semester, you'll figure out your sexuality. I was like 100% dead set. I had a timeline. I had like four months. It was the end of the semester. I will know if I'm gay or straight. I knew I really needed help. I knew I couldn't do this on my own. I had an absolutely amazing professor, best professor ever. She was just so wonderful, so open, so caring. She cared about her students so much. And I reached out to her and I said, hey, Brett, I, uh, I have something that I really want to talk to you about. Uh, it's serious. Can we meet up sometime? And I don't know if we like what we did the first time either I like, got coffee or went on a walk, but anyways, I kept, I had like weekly, every other week meetings with her and just told her like, I'm questioning my sexuality. Like, I don't know what I am. I don't know this. Um, and it was, I just had a really o open heart to heart conversation with her and she was super helpful. She listened and she listened and she listened more and she eventually gave me an assignment. And I remember the assignment was go home, write down every single sexual or attractive thought you've ever had in your entire life and just read over it and so you can have all your thoughts in one place. That's all she asked me to do. So I spent about two hours every single night for the next week writing down, just typing onto a Word document, not reviewing it, just typing every single sexual thought, feeling, attraction I've ever experienced my entire life from as far as I could remember to that day, uh, just always writing them down, constantly thinking of new thoughts. I never reread what I put. I just wrote down my feelings and kept on typing. And by the end of the week, I had like 20 pages of papers. I don't remember how long it was. And so after I was done with it, I feel like I got everything out. I sent it to her. I sent literally a paper of every single sexual thought, feeling, attraction I've ever had in my entire life. It was the most scary thing I ever done. I was so vulnerable. I was giving it to a, someone who was my professor and now it was, it was more like a coach, but I trusted her. So uh, I emailed that to her. After reading it, I realized that pretty much 100% of the stuff on there was attraction towards guys. There was maybe like two or three things that were attraction to girls, and those were just girls who were like my friends and I liked them because they had a good personality. But anyways, after sending it to her, we had another meeting. It was me, her, and her dog. We walked around this park and just talked and talked and talked. And when talking to her, even after writing all this stuff, I couldn't say that I was gay or I thought I was gay. All I could say is the evidence of my thoughts show that I'm gay. But I could not s take that, saying the evidence shows that I'm gay, and putting it into me and being like, I am gay. Like, I just could not accept it. It was incredibly hard. At the end of the meeting, she said, hey, how about for our next meeting, we meet with the head of the LGBTQ community at U of I. And I really didn't want to do it, but she thought it would be a good thing. And I kind of knew it would be a good thing, but it was just something that I really didn't want to do. So over the next two weeks, between my meeting with Brett and the meeting with the LGBTQ guy and Brett, I really thought about this stuff more, and I realized that... I might be a straight acting gay guy. And I know that's not politically correct, however, at the time, that was the only term I could really put on myself as like a label or like kind of begin to think I was. I said, I might be gay, but I'm straight acting. And it was like, it kind of was like a safe place for me. And I don't know why, but it was the first time I kind of like realized I was gay. It was using that term. And so anyways, then we get to this meeting and I'm talking to this guy and I'm like more open, like I'm feeling good. Um, and he, I remember was talking, telling me about all the pronouns, how I need to be using the right pronouns and the right terminology. And that was just not what I was there to hear for. And it was really just an off-putting first impression of what the LGBT community was like. And I didn't like it. I remember telling him I thought I was straight acting and him telling me, oh, like, that's wrong. You can't say that. Oh, you can't do that. That's offensive. Like, you cannot use that term. That is a bad word to use. Like, we don't use that in the LGBTQ community. That is a, not a good word to use. You can say you're questioning or you can say you're gay or you can say you're masculine gay, but don't use that. And he was just kind of like condemning me for using this. And I felt really proud of myself because it was the first time I could really say to myself, I am gay or I was something like close to being gay. I remember him saying, he's like, you know why it's wrong? Because if you're sucking dick, then you're not acting straight, you're acting gay. So if you're gay, you're gay, you're not straight acting. Cause if you're gay, you act gay. And I remember just being like, 
okay, dude, like, I'm, I'm just trying to figure myself out. Like, I'm not wanting to, like, fight with you. Like, this is just a term that I didn't know was bad. I was a very innocent mistake. Like, I felt safe using this term, and so that's why I did. So anyways, I obviously, I don't use that term anymore, straight acting. Like, I understand uh, how it's offensive. It wasn't really a great meeting. I didn't really feel like I was listened to or helped. However, there was one good thing that came from it, and it was when I was talking to him about why I liked using the term straight acting. Uh, I said, because... Uh, stereotypical gay people are feminine and stereotypical straight people are masculine and so because I'm more masculine I'm straight acting and, and he goes stereotypes like you can't stereotype everyone like not all gay people are one way not all straight people are one one way you can be a feminine straight guy you can be a masculine gay guy and that was really eye-opening to me because I realized my entire life I've been super 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 uh, stereotypical of the gay community and gay people and I just and I didn't even realize it about myself at the time but it was something that I had been doing wrong uh, that was bad and I really changed my mind and so that was one huge helpful thing that came out of that meeting uh, And it really changed my outlook on the world and really changed my outlook on the LGBTQ community And that was a big stepping stone in my coming out experience But anyways, I continued talking to Brett and she was super helpful and I just want to say Brett Thank you so much for helping me in my coming out experience. You were the most influential helpful person uh, In my coming out process and I couldn't thank you enough but um, anyway, so while I was still talking to her I also approached the two gay guys on the gymnastics team who I was really good friends with and just I told them like I am questioning my sexuality. I don't know if I'm gay. I'm just like thinking about it kind of uh, How did you know you were gay and just like kind of reached out to them? But yeah, we didn't really talk too much about it, but they were really helpful So even though I was able to kind of admit to myself for the first time, I think I'm gay I still hated about myself. I was super ashamed. I did not want to be gay It was just something I I don't know why like again It was something I was like other people can be gay But me like I'm not gay, but I am gay and I hate that about myself It was the biggest thing that I hated about myself for so long and I hope that none of you hate that about yourself because there's no reason to hate it about yourself um, But it took me a really long time to like accept the fact like once I accepted the fact that I am gay It was a long it took a lot longer for me to accept me for being gay at this point things are going really well I am uh, really close to coming out to myself I told two of, two of the other gay guys on team that I was questioning my sexuality However, there was one other gay guy on team who I hadn't told that to and that was just simply because I was there that summer Training with the gymnastics team and then I stopped doing gymnastics um, between summer and fall and he came in that fall to train with the team So I just wasn't as close to him. I like knew him we hung out at parties, but I wasn't really like, close with him So I hadn't told him um, this guy also had a very extravagant flamboyant um, Just like theatrical personality and he was just one to always you know give people hugs He was a very nice guy, but his behavior often could come off as flirtatious But anyways one night he was being super flirtatious with me more flirtatious than usually he kept on putting his arm around me I was kind of pushing myself away and he just kept on following me um, and flirting with me and I was super uncomfortable I wasn't even out to myself hundred percent yet And I did not want anyone knowing I didn't want the team thinking that I was gay I was still like super closeted and I just didn't want anyone knowing But I thought that one of the other two gay guys who I had told I was questioning my sexuality to might have told him since they're all pretty good friends Turns out they hadn't he was just being drunk, but I thought they might have so I said hey did so-and-so or so-and-so like tell you I was questioning my sexuality and he's like wait what like he just lit up he's like Wait, you're you're are you're gay? You think you you think you're gay? And they got super excited. I was like, no, 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 like, oh, I'm sorry, like, no, uh, no, just forget it. And he's like, wait, what? No, no, tell me. And he like went over outside of the house with me, and I was like, I don't want anyone to know this. I'm just questioning my sexuality. And I thought that one of the other two gay guys on team might have told you. He really wanted to talk to me more about it right there at the party, and I just didn't want to talk about it. So I just kind of turned around and left. Um, I was really mad that I had told him when I didn't have to, but anyways, that was that. So about two weeks later, I get a text from him saying like, hey, you want to come over? I really want to talk to you. And I'm like damn it, like, I don't want to talk to you about this, like, I'm just figuring my stuff out, like, but fine, sure, I'll come over. And this is where things got really bad for me. And before I get into this, I just want to say, the person I'm about to talk about is a good person, we're good friends, we were roommates for a year last year, um, and I have nothing, I, I have no grudges against them anymore, or, or any hatred or anger, I just want to say, at this one time I was just really upset and mad, and, uh, yeah, well, here's why. Anyway, so I went over to his dorm, and he was like, Hey Tristan, I have something really important to tell you and I'm like, oh god, like what what is this like you're gonna tell me like you like me or something? He's like So uh, about a week ago, I was really drunk and uh, I told the entire team that you were gay. And I was like Like what and then he goes and uh, You also hooked up with the guy and you had sex with someone and I don't know a bunch of other gossip and I was like Wait, what? Like, none of this is even true. Like, what? I, like, my head was spinning. I was like, I'm not even 100% out to myself. Now, all my best friends on the gymnastics team who are like, I been, I've been hanging out with the past week, and they've been thinking that I'm gay for the past week, and I don't want anyone. I'm not even 100% sure myself. Like, I, I didn't even know what to think. And on top of that, like, they think I've had sex with a guy. Like, I haven't even done anything with a guy besides, like, kiss someone. Like, oh my god. Like, I had no idea what to think. 
Uh, so I just, I forgave him. I was like, listen, like, I get, like, we all do stupid things when we're drunk. Um, I'm just gonna go home and think about this. So I went home, and I don't even know what I did. So yes, I was mad, but there was nothing I could do about it. So I just went on, continued living my life, and uh, hung, hanging out with the gymnastics guys. They were still my best friends. I still hang out with them. So it didn't really change anything. However, the worst part happened about a week later. And that's when I was at the gymnastics house again. And me and one of my best friends on the team, uh, Michael, were playing beard eye. We're beard eye partners, playing die. And after each point we get, you know, we're giving each other like handshakes, like bro hugs, like stuff like that. And we finished playing the game and the guy who told the whole team I was gay came up to me and goes, Hey, uh, Tristan, I just want to let you know, uh, try not like getting so close to Michael. Like don't, don't like, you know, like hug him and stuff like that. Like his, his girlfriend's really jealous and doesn't like you hitting on him. And I'm like are you kidding me like I was so livid I don't know if I've ever been this bad in my life I was like this entire team shouldn't even know that I'm gay I didn't want anyone to tell I'm not even 100% sure myself I'm not trying to hit on him we're just being friends he's one of my best friends I'm giving him like a bro hug and like stuff like that like we just got a point we're celebrating like winning a drinking game like and I can't do that anymore because I'm gay and now his girlfriend's jealous because she thinks I'm hitting on him like I was so incredibly mad uh, maybe like the maddest I've ever been in my whole life I was just pissed and I just left and anyways I realized from that that my biggest fear um, to every single person I've come out to is probably stemmed from that and that is the fear that I will be lose the ability to be a bro with my friends my guy friends in particular I feel like just if they know that I'm gay then we can no longer be bros I'm always scared of that whenever I'm coming out I'm, I'm worried that just because we're bros we can no longer like embrace after getting a point in a drinking game or we cannot like I don't know pee on a fire to put it out when we're done or we can't sit on a couch together and watch a movie together or we can't just like be alone hanging out one-on-one -on -one because I'm gay and that could be like weird or th thought of as weird at least and I'm always scared about that every single time I come out to a friend or not not so much anymore because I've had great experiences and my friends have been awesome with it but that was a huge uh, fear of mine when coming out to people and I think it all started with that moment with Michael and just to be clear like me and Michael are still best friends like I would consider him like one of my two like best friends like I'm super tight with him I've lived with him now this is my second year living with him we're super tight like he has nothing against like me being gay but he never even thought of it as weird it's just his girlfriend at the time didn't like it so yeah that was, that was like, that's been a big fear of mine but thankfully every single person I've come out to on the gymnastics team and like all my friends I've come out to have been super open with it they've been awesome I haven't lost my Broness with any of them uh, at all. Maybe one. I would say I lost it for a little bit, but I think like we're back to like normal now. It's just like took a little bit of time to getting used to things. In hindsight, I just want to say I am really thankful that that one guy kind of outed me to all of my best friends, the entire team, because it really was good for me in the end. Uh, and these are the two reasons why. The first reason is that. Being outed to all my friends kind of let me just be whoever I was. It let me be me, whether that be gay or not. I didn't have to worry about if people were thinking that I was gay. I just like, I mean, they already thought I was gay. So whether I was like gay or not, I could just kind of like be myself and I didn't have to worry about that. And that was a huge burden that was lifted from me. And the second reason was because everyone thought I was gay, even though I wasn't 100% sure, I was able to just go out and explore. I was able to hang out with the gay group on the gymnastics team, those three guys, plus some of their gay friends. We went to gay bars together. Uh, we just like hung out as like a group of gay guys and I had gay friends for the first time and they were all super warm and welcoming and awesome people and it was a great experience. However, I wouldn't have been comfortable doing that if all of the gymnastics team didn't know I was gay because I would have been like, oh, I don't want people seeing me with like a bunch of gay people. But because I already thought I was gay, I was like, sure, like I can like hang out with, hang out with all these gay people and it'll be awesome and I can have fun with them and go to a gay bar and explore new things um, and I had a really good time with it and it was that time is when for the first time I could accept to myself fully 100% like yes I'm gay I like this these are cool people this is a something I'm comfortable with and like I could say for the very first time confidently that I was gay Hanging out with these gay friends might have been the healthiest thing I could have done and did because it helped me realize that the LGBTQ community wasn't what I always thought it was I realized for the first time that Tons of everyday, average, normal, just like stereotypical, I don't know, people you see walking down the streets are part of the LG LGBT community, and that's a, a, a good portion of it. It's not just what I always thought it was. It wasn't just the very theatrical, flamboyant people that you might notice just because they stand out on the streets. It took me becoming part of the LGBTQ community to really realize it and appreciate all the wonderful, unique personalities um, and become friends with all sorts of, type of types of different people. I never really had friends that were more fl flamboyant or theatrical and all of a sudden like I was meeting all these flamboyant and theatrical people that were awesome and cool and I was friends with and it took me becoming a part of it to realize how wonderful, awesome, and unique all the different individual people are who are in it. However, at the same time while I was comfortable being a part of it, I still kind of hated it on the inside. I hated the fact that I was gay and I still couldn't accept that and that took a little bit longer for me to get over. So my freshman year ended and while I come out to the gymnastics team, I still didn't come out to any friends from back home, hadn't come out to my family, there's a whole bunch of people. And that summer I went on a road trip with my two best friends from high school and it was a three week trip, we went to a bunch of national parks, drove all the way up to Canada, it was a great time. And on that trip I came out to them. I came out to each of them individually and they both reacted great, they were super supportive. 
um, and it was my first time coming out to anyone from back home and it was an awesome experience. So summer quickly ended and I didn't really come out to anyone besides for those two good friends and I moved back to school with four guys from the gymnastics team. Um, at this point I wasn't, I didn't have an official role with the gymnastics team my freshman year after I stopped. However, this year I became back, I came back on as the team manager and I was living with four of my best friends on, on the gymnastics team, one of them actually being ironically the guy who out of me the entire team. Um, however, living with him was actually in a wonderful, amazing time, and I continued to grow and become more a part of the LGBTQ community with him. He was someone I could go to and talk to about anything LGBTQ related. Uh, he was awesome, a great resource to talk to. He also introduced me to a lot of new different things like drag. Um, he loved watching RuPaul, and I remember watching RuPaul with him sometimes, and really for the first time seeing and experiencing drag. Actually, me, him, and another gay guy on the gymnastics team, uh, we went to a drag show for our first time, and I really got into the gay community for the very first time and it was just like an awesome experience and it was really eye-opening to me. The first time in my life I could say that I wasn't, I was no longer ashamed to be gay. Even though I had kind of come out and I was comfortable being part of the gay community, there's always some inner thing in me that I was ashamed of being gay and I didn't want to be gay and I just kind of didn't like it about myself, I hated it about myself. Uh, but that slowly eased and I would say by the end of my sophomore year or even throughout my sophomore year, I was fully comfortable being gay and I would tell anyone who asked me or had a question about it. I think the most important thing I realized that year was being gay didn't mean I had to be feminine or something that I wasn't. It was that being gay was to be myself or being myself was to be gay. I didn't have to fake anything anymore, but I also wasn't being something I wasn't. I was just being myself and that was super relieving and a wonderful feeling and something that took me a while uh, to realize that I could be gay and be myself. It's the same way as how being straight is to be yourself. Like, if you're straight, can you imagine having to be gay to fit into society? It's a huge burden and a huge weight on your chest that gets released when you're finally true to who you are and being yourself, and it's a wonderful feeling. One of the best ways I've ever heard of what coming out to someone is, is when you're coming out to someone, you're giving them a gift. You're literally giving them the gift of knowing a little bit more about you, knowing a little bit about who you truly are. And you don't have to share who you truly are with everyone, but every time you do share a little bit more about you with someone, it's a gift you're giving them. And being gay, like for me, like it's like 2% of who I am. It's not like everything about me. It's just like 2% more about me that I'm giving to that person, letting them know that about me. Um, and that's, I think, a great way to look at it. And realizing that, I realized that I wanted to give that gift of coming out to my parents, and I hadn't done that yet. So my uh, sophomore year ended, and it was my top priority that summer to come out to them. And I was super nervous, but I think I was more excited than nervous because it was like, I realized I was like, I have this gift for you, and like, I, I really want to share this part of my life with you. So it was a couple days after I got back from abroad, and my brother was at a friend's house, and I really wanted to tell them. And me and my mom and dad were sitting around a table outside on our patio just talking, and I felt like it was a great opportunity and tell them we talked for about three hours about just like this that the other really like deep stuff I remember we were just having like, a great conversation I was like this is the perfect opportunity for me to come back come out to them um, and then eventually I kind of prolonged it prolonged it and my dad gets up I'm like oh hey where are you going he's like oh I'm going inside I have to wake up at six for work tomorrow and I was like wait there's something I want to tell you and he didn't get there he's like just tell me in the morning and then my mom is just like Paul Coon sit down and I was like oh god like I like what the heck's happening uh, like I realized that she realized something was up so uh, he sat down and I was just like I was super nervous but I was honestly more excited than nervous and I just looked at them and I was just like I'm gay uh, and it's something I want to tell you for a long time I know we're super close you know everything about me and it's just a little bit about me that you don't know and it's just a gift that I wanted to give you to let tell you tell you a little bit more about me and I remember my mom started crying I started crying I think my dad might have been crying, I don't know, and they, I don't know, they came up, they hugged me, just said they loved me no matter what. So that went about how I expected it. It was a huge weight that I lifted off my chest, and even though my parents, I wouldn't have considered them at the time to be LGBTQ allies, I would say that they, I knew they loved me unconditionally, and I knew that they would continue loving me. However, what I didn't know is what their, like, more in-depth thoughts would be. I know both of my parents, or especially my mom, they were, they're Catholic, like I was raised Catholic. Uh, they're both marriage counselors. My dad especially, like they're super big on marriage. I don't think there's nothing more important for them in life than marriage. Uh, it's like they're calling in life. They've been counselors like since I've been a little kid. But that wasn't really what we focused on at all. I remember like, yes, my dad did say something about like, we still support abstinence and we still support like one like long, good married, m marriage. Um, but aside for that, like I remember like the most of it was just them like, have we done anything like bad as parents to like make this extra hard for you like I hope you weren't too scared to come out to us like we love you and it was really just like a warm and receptive response that they had uh, to me coming out to them and I was really happy I did it um, I'm super super close with my parents uh, we I can tell them pretty much everything they literally know about every single aspect of my life however this was one of the actually definitely like the biggest aspect of my life that they didn't know so it was really awesome 
uh, telling that to them. Since then, my parents have also become like super pro LGBTQ. Like they've like become super like a ton more op open minded. My mom told me like she didn't realize how judgmental she was, but she's been such a judgmental person. And like me coming out has like completely opened her eyes. Uh, they quit like going to the Catholic Church. They are now going to a new church. My mom's joined like a Moms of Gay Kids support group. I think it's like a Christian based one. But, yeah, overall coming out to them has been a great experience. I think I've opened their eyes a little bit. And I just want to say, Mom, Dad, thank you so much for loving me unconditionally, being such wonderful, amazing parents, and I love both of you so much, and just want to say thank you for being my parents and for being so awesome. Oh yeah, so uh, that was about six months ago that I came out to my parents, and since then I've come out to my brother, I've come out to some other close family members. I haven't come out to some friends who I just like don't talk to that much, um, and I also haven't come out to like some external family, but I don't care if they know. But yeah, if you're a family member watching this, like don't be offended that I didn't tell you personally, it's just it's like coming out is a lot of effort that I don't feel like I have to do and tell every single person. Um, so you'll either find out when I get a boyfriend, and I'm sure I'll bring him around to like some family event, or you'll find out through watching this. And um, if you're like a friend of mine from high school or just someone who, I don't know, who knows me, like feel free to reach out. Like I'm an open book. I don't mind answering questions if you have any. I haven't told every single person, but I've told a lot. So uh, yeah, like don't be afraid to ask about it or like not talk about it. I want to bring it up in like a conversation if you see me in the future. Um, but most importantly, if you're gay or you're questioning your sexuality or you're trying to come out, I don't know, if you're having some problems, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, com coming out videos have been one of the most amazing things uh, for me uh, and helping me come out personally. And I hope that I really, really hope that I can help some other people with this video. So I'm going to leave a link to my Instagram below. So feel free, if you have any questions, you have any personal questions you want to reach out to me, feel free to send me a direct message. Yeah, I really want to help you out on your coming out journey. If you just have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Thank you so much for watching my coming out video. It really does mean a lot to me. Um, if you want to see me do any more like LGBTQ related topics or I don't know, maybe like a gay q and I don't even know, uh, let me know in the comments below. I wasn't envisioning that being a huge part of this channel, but I do want to include some of that in this channel. Um, but if it's something that you'd be interested in seeing, like, let me know in the comments and I'll make some more content. So, I think that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Adios, amigos.